Here's just seven tips, seven things to start addressing and looking at when it comes to getting in the trenches and starting to focus and do the work on our mental health. So number one is learning to specifically identify your feelings while letting them have a voice and be heard. So being able to label and diagnose what feelings you might be having. Am I anger? Am I angry? Excuse me. Am I sad? Am I overwhelmed? Am I... Uh, rejected? Am I, uh, you know, somber, whatever these feelings that might arise, be able to sit with them, have them label them, let them have a voice and be heard. But we're not letting it. um, We're not wallowing in them. We're not letting it transform us. We're just allowing these emotions to be identified specifically while letting them have a voice. Okay, I am feeling a bit angry now. Okay, I am feeling a bit overwhelmed. Now the next would be what action steps can we take? to help us have those feelings just pass or alleviate those feelings or get some support or start moving our body to get ourselves into our body so we can allow ourselves to relieve those emotions. But learning to specifically identify your feelings while letting them have a voice and be heard is very important. And then the next next step is having awareness of and examining your beliefs, values, and habits. Your beliefs, values, and habits drive your day, right? What are your beliefs? What are your values? What are your habits, right? The number one thing, the number one thing you can do right now to improve your life is to stop doing the things that make you feel like shit. That's your habits. And those habits are driven by your belief systems. Your, what are your beliefs? Okay, figure those out. What are your values? What are your core values? What are your first principles? Is it zest, resilience, consistency, love, honesty, gratitude, hope, kindness? Are those your values? What are they? Pick three to seven and really hone in on how you want to live. Those values should be what drives how you think, feel, and act, which then drives your behaviors, which then drives your habits. It's all in alignment with your core values and how you wish to show up in the world. And again, going back to how you wish to express those unique talents and gifts. So it's important. And then number three, it falls in line with number two, would be to um, identify how your beliefs and values impact your behaviors and actions. That's what we just talked about. Like, how do you, your core values impact how you behave and impact how you act? How do your beliefs impact how you behave and impact how you act? You have to take an inventory on this. You have to take a reset. If your life isn't going in the trajectory where you want it to go, or you don't feel the way you want to feel on the more consistent basis, okay, then let's let's identify our beliefs and values and how they're impacting our behaviors. Because if we know, again, the things that are not making us feel good, we have to stop doing those. And the things that we know that could potentially make us feel better, we have to start doing those. But we have to reflect on that. We have to journal on that. We have to think about what's going well, um, what could go better, and how can we go about making that better, but acknowledging also what's going well. So identifying our beliefs and values and how they impact our actions. Number four, we have to address and acknowledge unhealed past trauma and pain. And this could be through a a men's group, through hiring a professional, um, whatever the case may be is, but we have to dig deep into our depths and look at our shadow and address it because everyone has a shadow. Everyone has this darkness inside of them, but we have to come to terms with it. We can't continue to avoid and repress and shut down. We have to voluntarily, voluntary is very important, voluntarily go and face the dragon and we will slay the dragon, but there'll be another dragon and another dragon and another dragon. We have to continually face it head on, take challenge or take on the challenge. Obstacles make me stronger and we have to address and acknowledge that unhealed past trauma and those wounds so we can let go, be freer and become that best version of ourselves and not let the weight of our past continue to drag us down or affect our upcoming relationships or impact the way we speak to our kids or our wife or our partner or our boss or the way we hold ourselves back because we think we're not worthy of this or don't give us permission to go out and get something, right? All of these things are impacted by that. And so we have to address it. We have to acknowledge it. We have to try and heal it through whatever sort of means are possible and able for you. Number five, notice unhelpful thinking patterns and behaviors that no longer serve you, right? This is just an idea of being aware, right? Um, If we're not aware, we can't recognize, we can't change. It's awareness, it's acceptance, it's action. Become aware of how you're thinking, your unhelpful thinking patterns, how you're feeling, your emotions you're feeling, um, where you're at in your life. Be aware of that. 
and then accept the fact that this is happening. Accept the fact that you might be angry or you might be sad or you might be not be in the position that you specifically want to be in. Have to accept it. Can't fight reality, but we can't accept it and move from there. Acceptance isn't complacency. Acceptance is our starting point. That means that we can absolutely move up from there. And that's the beauty of it. Right. And so we're noticing that and then we're moving into action. Everything is action, action, action. We have to be able to take control of our mental health. That's why I'm giving you these tools to do the work. Right. It's not just this esoteric thing that you can't grab onto. There are specific actionable items that you can do right now to improve your mental health, along with moving well, eating well, sleeping well and thinking well. That will absolutely impact your physiology, which impacts deeply your mental and physical state. Right. But this is what doing the work is. Right. You have to notice that you have to have awareness. You have to have acceptance and then you have to move into action. And then number six would be identifying, creating and setting clear boundaries with yourself and others. Right. You just have to have emotional parameters in your life emotional parameters for you and other people, emotional parameters for what you will and won't do, how you say no, practicing how you say no, being able to say no, being firm in your stance, understanding what does and what doesn't serve you, what's in alignment with you and what isn't in alignment with you. That really falls down into your core values and your first principles. If you're really like dialed in to your first principles and your core values, it's much easier to say no because you absolutely 100% know that it doesn't align with you. If you're wishy-washy about your first principles, you don't really know where you stand. It's very easy to say yes to everything. But when you know them, saying no is not as hard because you understand who you are and where you want to be in this world. And that's very, very, very important. And so um, number seven, it just sort of sums everything up. We just have to know that growth will be uncomfortable. It will be uncomfortable. And a lot of times this work, when we go into the trenches, when we go into the depths of our own soul, it's lonely. It's lonely and it can be lonely. So prepare, be prepared for the inner work to be a bit lonely. But when we come out on the other side as a new, better, uh, more in tune version of ourselves that was always there all along, all this dormant potential was there all along and you were capable of expressing that best version of you, that work may be a little lonely because we have to go into our shadow, because we have to go into the depths of hell and figure out what's happening we have to figure out what's happening and then move from there. We have to identify these patterns. We have to do the work. We have to address unhealed pain. We have to go back into our past. We have to think about our thinking patterns. We have to dial deep into our first principles. All of that will be uncomfortable, but that's the only place that we grow. That's the only place we grow from through reflection, through practice, through action. And so we have to be willing to go in the trenches. We have to be willing to do the uncomfortable work. We have to be willing to do the lonely work to figure out who we really are and who we really want to be and to take control and ownership over our life and more specifically over our mental health. 